This video is going to introduce one of the most important concepts in calculus. This is going to talk about the definition of a derivative. The derivative of a function is the slope of a tangent line at any specific x value. So in other words, the derivative is the rate of change of a function, because that's slope, at a specific x value, which you know now is the instantaneous rate of change. So a derivative is the slope of the tangent line at an x value. All right, so let's say we have this function, f of x. There's my function. And I have an x value here, x. If that's my x value on there, then the y value is f of x. Meaning whatever that x value is, its y value is plugging that x value into the function. And then, let's say that we go a distance beyond x. Let's say that we go h units away, away from x. We're gonna call that x plus h. Then on the graph, f, or that y value is f of x plus h. Okay, just like in instantaneous rate of change, we want to find the slope of this line. It should be a straight line. I don't know why my pen didn't want to draw it nice and straight. Okay, we want to find the slope of that straight line. However, we want to keep finding it as the distance between my x values gets closer and closer to zero. As my h approaches zero, the slope of my secant line will approach the slope of a tangent line because eventually then we will be right at one specific point. Now the slope of the secant line would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that would be f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x. And that simplifies to f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now what do we want with h? Is we want the derivative or in order to get the derivative, we want our h to approach zero. So we're gonna take the limit of this function as h approaches zero. Okay, and right here, we will have the limit definition of a derivative. So this is the formula. Now I wanna go over step by step exactly how to do this, and there are a couple different methods depending on what derivative you're taking. So let's take a look at an example and go through the steps as we do the example. All right, so let's find the derivative of f of x equals two to the, two times x to the second power. There we go. So the steps for finding the deriva derivative using the limit definition here is first thing you want to do is plug x plus h into the function. So I want to find f of x plus h. Okay, and if we go plug that in, we get 2 times x plus h squared. And you will want to FOIL that all the way out. Um, so I would FOIL x plus h squared and then multiply the 2 through. So I won't waste our time FOILing that all the way out but you would get 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared. Okay, step two then is to plug f of x plus h, so what we found here, and f of x into the formula right here. All right, so let's do that first. 
Oh, so we have the limit as h approaches 0 of my f of x plus h, which we found was 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus, and then whatever our original f of x was, which in our case would just be 2x squared. So it's whatever we started with in our original problem. And then that will all be divided by h. Now if you look here, we cannot plug 0 in for h yet. We can't let h approach 0 yet. Because if I do, we would have 0 in our denominator, and that's not OK. So we're going to manipulate this equation somehow so that we can eventually plug 0 in. So step 3 is to simplify the formula so that h can be plugged in without a restriction in the denominator. So if I have 2x squared and I subtract 2x squared, those will cancel out. And we're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 4xh plus 2h squared over h. Now, look to see if you can factor an h out and cancel. So that should happen here. Both terms have an h, so I'm going to factor an h out. So I'm left with 4x plus 2h over h. And because now this h is being multiplied, we can cancel. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 4x plus 2h. And if you notice, we no longer have h in the denominator, so it is now OK to plug 0 in for h. So step 4, plug 0 in for h, and then you will have your derivative. So we are going to just take the 0, plug it in for h, and we get 4x plus 2 times 0, which is 0. So that means that my derivative, written f prime of x, is equal to 4x. OK. So the derivative of f of x equals 2x squared at any x point is f prime of x equals 4x. That means you can plug any x value into the derivative and get the rate of change or the slope of the tangent line at that point. If you feel like you've got the concept down, you can stop watching the video now. I'm going to do just a couple more problems just so that you can see them if you want to. Alright, so let's find the derivative of f of x equals 1 over x. Alright, so the first step here would be to take f of x and plug in x plus h. So that ends up being 1 over x plus h. Okay, now we will plug that into the limit definition. So the limit definition, once again, I'll just write it right up here. f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I want to do the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which we found is 1 over x plus h, minus 1 over x over h. So here we have the limit definition for our specific function. Now we need to figure out a way to simplify that, and that's going to be a little bit tricky here. But the best thing to do is if you have rational equations in here is undo the complex fraction. Alright, so in this now we want to simplify this so that we can plug h in or 0 in for h. So the easiest way to do that with a rational equation is multiply through by the complex 
or the least common denominator of the complex fraction. All right, and if we do that here, okay, so if I multiply through by the least common denominator, if I go to this fraction, the x plus h's will cancel out, and I just have x minus, the second part, the x's cancel out, x plus h on the numerator, and then in the denominator, I have h times x, x plus h. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify that. We end up with the limit as h approaches zero. <clears throat> x minus x is zero, and then minus h on the numerator. And h times x times x plus h in the denominator. Now, what's gonna happen is those h's will cancel. So we have the limit as h approaches zero of negative one over x times x plus h. Now think to yourself, is it okay to plug zero in for h? Yes, because it doesn't give us a multiple of zero in the denominator. So now we can plug zero in for h and it would be negative one over x times x plus zero, which is just x times x. So that means that the derivative of this function at any x value is negative one over x squared. And that is our derivative and we're done with that problem.